Hey everybody, Ron Rich here, and I'm back with part two of how to build an acoustic guitar. In part one, we covered quite a bit of ground. In part two, I'm going to cover even more. So in this video, we're getting a lot of things done. I want to thank everybody for coming back. And I also want to take just a moment to ask everybody to click the subscribe button down below. If you would, click the thumbs up and then click on the bell. That's for your notifications. That will notify you every time I put out a new video. I'm going to work on the back now. Trying to get this smoothed out. I've got a little notch right here, which actually is not even based on my outline here. It's outside the outline. That's uh, really outside where it's going to bother me, but I just want to make sure I'm good and smooth all the way across on both halves. And it's amazing. It's been humid here uh, for probably a month or so at least. And you can see how much bow I've actually got in this. Good thing is once I get this edge straight and flat, get them both flat and get it in the uh, uh, jig that I've got that I can glue these two halves together, it'll keep that good and flat. I'm not gonna worry about it. Um, and then of course, once I, I'm sure once I pull it out of the jig, it'll probably come back up unless the, uh, the uh, humidity changes and then Plenty to watch these things. They'll they'll bend in one way. The next day you come and they're straight. Um, you know, the humidity plays a huge role in how wood reacts. Oddly enough, these two pieces were sitting together in the same location. Uh, it really didn't warp. It's. Uh, it's still pretty straight, at least compared to the other one. Today I'm going to get started on the back. Um, I've got the uh, two halves of the book matched pair uh, of, that I'm going to be using for the back. And uh, there, uh, of course, this is mahogany. Um, and I'm going to glue this up, get this all done, get the bracing on it. I'll be working on that today.
Got a piece of wax paper I'm going to put in here to keep this from sticking to the this bottom plate. Actually, I'm going to make this a little easier. Turn this over. something else. Okay, uh, you can see right there I'm at about 110 thousandths. It's moving maybe. I'm going to turn this. Done quite a few things here. Uh, got it thickness down on the drum sander, down to the uh, as thin as I wanted to do on the drum sander. I've also gone in, cut a, uh, a channel, and put my decorative strip in, got that all smoothed down, everything looks good there. I've got this thickness down to about 110 thousandths right now. Uh, I want to get it down to, I'm thinking probably somewhere around 95 thousandths. That'll leave me... I don't know, probably 10 to 15 thousandths where I can correct any mistakes that I make uh, during assembly if I get any nicks in it or anything like that. Hopefully that leaves me room. All right now I'm, I'm taking most everything off of the back, of the inside of the back. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing that because the decorative strip that I've put in 
I think I've got about 25 to 30 thousandths, yeah, about 30 thousandths probably, of, of room left on the decorative strip. So I don't want to take a chance at sanding this down and going through that and then having problems there. So I'm taking most everything off of the, the actual back side or the inside of the bag. So anyway, the other thing that I've noticed is that when I sand this, and I don't know if you can see that or not, but when I sand this, the mahogany is actually bleeding into the spruce. Uh, what I've got here, I've got you know three strips of, of wood. I took a strip of the uh, spruce and then a strip of the mahogany and another strip of the spruce and uh, made a little decorative strip there, put that in. But what's happening when I sand this, it actually is bleeding into the spruce and it's turning it a darker brown. I've, I've, I've got a fix for that. I've been playing with it a little bit to try to figure out how to get that back to a bright, you know, whiter or at least lighter beige color instead of the dim dark that the uh, mahogany is, is doing. Uh, so what I'll do, once I've got this sanded down, get everything pretty much where I want it, before I put any coating, any type of coating whatsoever on here, I'll take a piece of steel wool and come down here gently on the spruce and bring that back and you know I've done this a couple of times already just to see how it was working and, and it brings it back to a nice bright typical spruce color um, so I'll take care of uh, doing that at, towards the end of this all in all it's looking good all right I'm working on the bracing now I've got to get it contoured uh, I've got a little I've done a little bit of work with it uh, this is the first piece you can see I still have a little gap there. I've got to work that down. So that's what I'm, I'm working on now. I'll try to get these all done and uh, glued up here shortly. As you can see here, I've got this worked all the way into this point in this direction and all the way into here. I still have pencil marks in this area right here. Once those pencil marks are gone, we're good. Just wanted to cover this with y'all. This is this is the way I heat up my high glue, and uh, you know it's pretty simple, really. I've got a meter that has a temperature function on it. Try to keep the temperature between 140 and 145. I've seen it both ways. Some people say 140, and others say about 145 on the uh, hide glue, trying to get that up to temperature. Um, I have just turned this on. It, it hasn't had long enough to uh, actually melt down in the jar yet. I don't set the jar directly on the bottom. I do try to keep it up off of the, the heat as much as possible because I know if you heat this too much you can actually uh, weaken the uh, effectiveness of the glue. But this is how I heat up my hide glue. All right, I have started putting the bracing on. I've got four pieces on so far. Works pretty good. Pretty solid. Anyway, I am using hide glue on this. I did use tight bond on the rosette to get that on there. Just it gave me a little more working time to uh, to try to get that all in place and everything, but. Uh, I did go ahead and use high glue on here, and I'll use high glue probably throughout the rest of most of what I've got left. But that's all looking pretty good. Uh, I've got these pieces left to put on. It's kind of late here where I'm at 
So I'll probably get started on this tomorrow after I get off of work, get the rest of the pieces on there and get that all glued up. Okay, I just uh, went through, used my template here, marked these off, and then put it on the bandsaw and cut the pieces off of it. Now, I've got the, these are for my sides. I have left the ends a little bit long here on both ends. Once I get this put in the form, I'll get it uh, trimmed to length. I don't want it to be short. Uh, although probably not that big of a deal there's going to be uh, inlay on the end there uh, but I did leave a little bit of extra room just in case I need some so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand these down get them thickness down to about 75 thousandths uh, I've heard again different numbers on the sides 65 thousandths to 75 thousandths and the thicker you can leave it the better off you are and still be able to bend it. So I'm gonna probably try these at about 75,000.
Okay, I've soaked this board for about 10 minutes. This is uh, one of the sides here. And I'm gonna bend. I've already bent the other one. I'm going to show this one how I bend them. I've got a uh, little fixture set up here. Uh, I use a propane torch. I set this down right in here. Get the temperature up. Okay, I want to take just a minute and show you what I've got here as far as what I'm going to use to assemble the body. Um, actually, I've already got the sides in ready to go. Got these, uh, which I can adjust these in and out to put pressure on the, the sides to uh, hold them into shape. Uh, I've got the adjustment nuts here on each side at both ends. All right. Now I've got this piece in the middle here, which I'll use this while I'm putting in the neck block and the end block to press those outward. I've got this piece on this end down here, which actually I've got adjustments on that as well, which will move this in and out to put pressure against the wall of the, uh, the body to hold the end block in. At the same time, it will put pressure backwards on this this moves back and forth this way so I can basically sandwich those in there while I'm gluing them in which actually I'm getting ready to do right now all right I'm gonna go ahead and glue the end block and the neck block in I'm gonna put the end block in temporarily Well, I put, use it to put pressure on the other end where the neck block will be, right, which goes in this end down here. Right. Let me get this glued in, or glued up. sure I've got plenty of glue on this. Just down in here, get it in place.
get as much of the glue off as I can. Okay, I've made uh, made some modifications to my jig here. To uh, I've added all these pieces of all thread in here so that I can use that to actually hold down the top while it's while I'm gluing it up and it's drying, uh, or the back for that matter. I can do them either way. Um, just you know, in testing it, I put the top in, clamped it down, works out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, now it's time to get it all glued into place. So I'm going to do that now. Got me a little bit of glue here, and I lied. I am actually going to use Tight Bond 2 on this all the way around and instead of using the uh, hot hide glue. Uh, just the length of time that you have to work with that hot hide glue is, uh, I don't know, it, to me it just, uh, I think this is probably the best way to go.
The other thing I've done too, and I don't know if you've noticed from looking at the, uh, the uh, jig and all, but I've actually gone in and I've put some uh, painter's tape around to keep the squeeze out from going down in. You know, I'm hoping it'll help me during cleanup. It'll be a little easier to pull the tape off rather than having to deal with the squeeze out. We'll see. Okay, I've got the back on. Uh, I've got the got it all clamped down. It's all drying. Um, I don't know if you can tell by the camera angle, but I've got a really nice arch on the back here. It's worked out well. Uh, I'll be getting that all sanded down here soon. Still working on the neck over there. I'm working on putting the uh, pearl in for the logo on the headstock i got that lined in getting it cleaned out so i can get the uh, drop the pearl in it's good um i've got the fretboard over there that i'm i'm working on i'm gonna uh put the uh, dots in to get those glued up and get them ready to go. Hey everybody, we've reached the end of part two. Uh, I want to thank everybody for watching again. If you would, please hit the subscribe button down below, click on the thumbs up, and then also click on the bell. That will notify you every time I put out a new video. I've got part three that should be coming out uh, next week. So if you would keep checking back,